Just imagine, you had a really horrible day, all right? You wake up in the morning, it's 6.20, close your eyes, open them again, it's 9.45. You're already late to wherever you need to go. You get in the train, it's super slow. You get out, take an Uber, five minutes later, tire goes flat. An hour later, finally, you get to your destination, and before you go into the building, a bird craps on your shirt. <laughs> you look at it, you wipe it off, you only make it worse, you walk in, slip, fall on your face, and you break your leg. Finally, <laughs> you're escorted to the hospital by someone who was very kind to do so. And on the way there, you're complaining, you're venting about your day, and that person tells you, stop, 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 stop. stop. Just be positive. You know, if you're positive, the negativity will go away. <laughs> How many of you think that's helpful? Let me, let me see. Okay. And uh, that's a problem. I've seen it everywhere. Social media, all over Instagram, and in real life conversations. I've seen it on t-shirts and people walking down the street. And initially, I was like, yeah, yeah, good vibes only, positive vibes only. But now, I'm so sick of it. I'm here to tell you, positivity can be toxic. After starting a company to tackle the youth mental health crisis, I came to question every single thing I thought I knew about mental health. One of my primary takeaways is that our language is so important. And it's actually one of the biggest problems in America today. We have no idea how to talk about mental health. Growing up, like many of you, I had my share of struggle. Um, from bullying to racism, discrimination, to family struggles, financial struggles, and um, then college, adulting, juggling jobs, internships, clubs, and trying to balance all of that, you know, hurt my mental health. I had a decline, and I was never really able to address it. Throughout it all, I was very, very desperate for connection and help. And at my lowest point, after my first company failed, and the accumulation of all those challenges that I never really addressed, I completely burnt down, I was so broken, and I had no idea what was happening. I started questioning my self-worth. I started having suicidal thoughts, and those thoughts turned into attempts. I tried to end my life twice, but I failed both times. The third time, though, I had a much more concrete plan. I remember coming back from school, New York City subway, going back home, going into my house, up the stairs, almost into my room, and my mother grabs me by the shoulder. She turns me around with tears coming down her face and a trembling voice, and she says to me, Mahmoud, I saw your note. What is this supposed to mean? And she'd seen the suicide note that I had written. And these are a few lines from that note. I'm tired of being tired. I'd rather be dead. I don't want attention, I swear. I don't want to be a burden on other people. I don't want to be a burden on anyone. That's why I don't like to talk to people. I'm so sorry. You can imagine how awkward it was for my mother to ask me about my note before I was supposed to die. At the time, I thought she completely ruined my plan. <laughs> my mom... <laughs> She kept asking me questions, but I was so angry. And I was ashamed. I was like, why is she being so intrusive? So I blocked her off. I blocked her off for months until she just stopped asking. Finally, about two weeks ago, I was putting this talk together, and I found the words to be able to explain to her why. I said, Mom, you know, during my most profound suffering, I was always instructed to be positive, to look on the bright side to remember that there are kids back home who are starving to death. Anything less than complete gratitude insinuated, at least to me, that I'm being ungrateful, that I'm spoiled. Being positive, as I came to understand it, meant completely avoiding the problem and focusing only on the good. And I'll tell you more about my mother later, but when I was called a terrorist by my peers in middle school, I chose to be positive. When my family was financially struggling, I chose to be positive. When I got fired from my first job, I chose to be positive. And when I was physically unable to move because of my mental illness, I tried my hardest to be positive. 
I bought so far into it, I started telling it to any of my friends, anyone who'd listen, anyone who'd come up to me. One of my friends would come up to me and say, hey, Mahmoud, I've been feeling really down lately. I'd be like, whoa, 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 just be positive, okay? Trust me, this mindset has been working for me for years. It's going to work for you. Or they come up to me and say, hey, Mahmoud, I've been really hitting my job lately and blah, blah. I'd be like, whoa, you see this circle right here? This is my good vibes only zone, okay? I don't want no negativity inside of it. And um, that really hurts. It hurts people. What is puzzling, though, was that all along, while erecting this positive facade, I started doing drugs. I was smiling all day, going across the city, giving inspiring talks to people, but I was crying myself to sleep. I was posting on social media about positivity, but I was thinking I didn't deserve to live. So, why the disconnect, right? It's because at the most fundamental level, the standard that society is setting for us to be positive all the time is literally, it's not human nature. I thought I was alone, but stats show us otherwise. We know that millions of people across America and across the world are suffering in silence. According to the World, world Health Organization, uh, today depression is the leading cause of disability. One in four people suffer from a mental illness, and 50% of these mental illnesses start at age 14 right when kids are starting to go to high school. And can you imagine that for a second? Being 14, you go through one of your biggest emotional challenge, and you go out, you try to talk to somebody, and what do they tell you? It's just a phase. You don't know what struggle is. You have no idea. Be positive, just get through it. And that, that really hurts people. And that's why I started my organization, Floramind, um, teaching over so far 500 young people skills to manage their mental health and be able to flourish. And one of the most important concepts we teach young people is that mental health is a continuum. And this is a really good representation of that continuum. It shows us that mental illness, is not, mental health is not black or white, from healthy to ill, all encompassing with all emotions that helps us understand our social, emotional, and psychological well-being, and when we should be seeking professional help. You see, if a lot more of us understood that, we wouldn't be having a lot of the problems we're having today. And uh, research uh, supports that from Dr. Susan David, a Harvard psychologist. She did research with over 70,000 people, and she found that a third of us either judge ourselves for having so-called bad emotions like anger, uh, grief, or just being sad or we actively try to push those feelings aside. And we don't do that just to ourselves. We do it to the people we love, to the people that come up and talk to us. So when positivity is pushed to an extreme, it is toxic. And psychologists are starting to call it toxic positivity. So toxic positivity is the push for a mental state in which we only experience and show positive emotions. It's uh, a tendency to react to our own and others suffering with reductive statements of positivity. And it's really, really bad for us for a few reasons. First, it instantly shuts down the emotional conversation. That super unique opportunity for you to seek help or someone else to seek help is gone. And because of that, uh, people end up not seeking help. Two studies published in Motivation and Emotion show that those who acknowledge and validate their emotions progress way better than those who live in denial. Second, it divides emotions into good and bad, and it demonizes the bad emotions that we just talked about, like sadness, anger, or even grief. And that directly contributes to the stigma around mental health across the country. And the truth is that there is no good or bad emotion. Every single emotion has a function, a function that tells us what's going on in our bodies, what's going on in our environment, and how we should react to them. It's really important, though, to note that emotions, they're data, they're not directives. So while you can acknowledge them, you don't always have to choose to react to them. And lastly, it sets the unrealistic expectation that we need to be happy all the time. That's literally not possible. By living in a fake, positive, emotional state, we don't get to experience real positive emotions. It's, it's, it's very similar to physical health, right? Like, ma'am, uh, imagine you broke your hand, God forbid, and instead of taking you to the hospital, I'll tell you, just be happy. 
Yeah, it's not going to work. Um, and that's why language matters. Language validates our experiences or negates them. It leaves us feeling appreciated or neglected, happy or sad. Toxic positivity ultimately blocks people from seeking help. Help that can not only improve their lives, um, but also save someone's life. Inspired by psychotherapist Whitney Hawkins, here are some responses um, that I'm giving you that you can use the next time you sense that you're going to give off toxic positivity or see someone else doing it. So instead of just be positive, we'll go with, we'll go with, it's never great to feel like that. Is there something we can do today that you'd enjoy? Instead of stop being so negative, you can say, it's pretty normal to be angry in this situation. And I'm here for you. Instead of see the good in everything, you can say, I don't even know what to say right now, but I'm so glad that you told me. And for any of these responses, for almost any conversation, if you even get up and just give that person a hug and tell them that you hear them and show them, it'll last so much longer than many other statements that will probably hurt them instead. When I was at my lowest point, feeling overwhelming shame for not being able to be positive all the time, what I wanted to hear more than anything else was, Mahmoud, I hear you. I see that you've gone through some really difficult stuff lately, and I'm here for you. It's okay to feel crappy when crappy stuff happens, and I'm willing to listen to anything that you'll tell me. And that's empathy. Empathy is stepping into someone else's shoes and showing them that you're caring for them at that moment. You're listening to them and trying your best to provide what they need. And that's what actually um, saved my life. I realized this most recently speaking to Dr. Newirth at Menlo College that my mother, by her constantly asking me those questions, though I thought they were very annoying at the time, she actually showed me she cared. She was validating my experience. She was showing me that someone actually understood what it was like at the time, that I was a boy that was suicidal, I was depressed, and uh, she didn't stop for a while but I'm glad we were able to talk about it now, and I thank my mother recently because she did save my life. Today, I've come a long way. I've healed, and um, that is thanks to being able to actually seek help to my friends and my family, to my stronger faith, and being able to understand my mental health better. Today, I'm better, and... Um, that's the message that I want to push and I hope that you leave with today. And you understand that the truth is that it's really important to feel because without feeling, we're not truly experiencing life. You can make such a huge impact by being so much thoughtful and intentional with the words that we use. We know that when positivity is pushed to an extreme, it can cause more harm than good. And that's why if I can redesign that phrase or idea of good vibes only or positive vibes only, I would instead say, all vibes welcome. Thank you. Thank you.